Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about a very special case of the linear non-homogeneous recurrence relations. I'm also going to, at the same time, use this opportunity to show a cool example. So, if you take all of the integers up to a certain point n, and you add them together, this is called the nth triangular number, so Sn, those are triangular numbers. Um, the, the name comes from, you can draw a diagram like S3 would be 3 plus 2 plus 1. So, and this is a triangle obviously, so it, it can be shown in various ways that this is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. To say a closed formula that doesn't involve a long sum of numbers, which could be useful if you needed to add up all the integers up to a certain point. Um, there are a lot of ways to drive this. The way that I'm going to show is probably the most difficult, but um, I think I know of like five or six different ways to drive it, so I might actually make a mini-series on that later on. But the way I'm going to show is by using recurrence relations. So what you can do is iterate this once, now it goes up to n plus 1 instead of just n. From here, you can just take the bottom line and subtract the top line. All these terms in between cancel out, and you just get Sn plus 1 minus Sn is equal to n plus 1, this extra term right here. You also have the ad additional initial condition that the zeroth triangular number is just 0. It's easy to see from this definition. So what we have here is a linear first-order non-homogeneous recurrence relation with a linear input function and it's an initial value problem. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is look at the homogeneous solution. So let's look at the characteristic equation. Find that lambda is equal to 1. And so the homogeneous solution is just a constant times 1 to the n, which is just a constant. So from here normally the guess for the particular solution would just be, well, we put a linear function in, so we expect to get a linear function out for the particular solution. But there's a problem. In this case, our homogeneous solution is a constant. Now, of course, we have the initial value problem, but we, we're going to deal with that um, last. We know that any constant that you put in to this equation is just going to give you zero, and a constant was part of our guess. So we have to um, refine our guess. This guess isn't going to work. So in differential equations, what you would do is you would multiply your guess by t. So as expected here, uh, the procedure is just to multiply by n. I have that all written out here too in case you want to read it. So, your new guess becomes, it's just the same as this guess, but you just multiply it by n. And I hope you're not just going to take that for granted, just because I'm saying it, and you want to know why it is, because that's what I'm about to show you. Um, the idea, though, would be then, of course, from here you just do method of undetermined coefficients. This is just like... Um, it's pretty much like the last example. The only difference is our input function overlaps with the homogeneous solution, and so it alters our guess a little bit. Specifically, we end up having to multiply it by n. Okay, so let's see what that, why that is, actually. Let's see why that is. So... I'll use the same method as I used in the last video to show you why it is. So let's see, what is the recurrence relation? I'm just going to write it over again. So it's Sn plus 1 minus Sn equals n plus 1. So I'm going to do the same thing I did in the last video and just iterate this once. And then I'm going to take the bottom one subtract the top one. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to get rid of this n. That's the first step. So if I do that, this is what I get. Yeah. 
here I have n plus 2 minus n plus 1, that's just 1. So you should be thinking about what is the characteristic equation of this. It looks like you're going to have a repeated root. Um, so it's not quite done yet. Let's do it again to make it into a homogeneous. Iterate one more time. And subtract. Take the bottom one and subtract the top one. And now I have a homogeneous. So let's look at the characteristic equation of this. This would be lambda cubed minus 3 lambda squared plus 3 lambda minus 1 is equal to 0. And you should be able to recognize these uh, coefficients from, the, uh, from Pascal's triangle. This is just this, the factored or the expanded version of this lambda minus 1 cubed is equal to 0. So what you see here is that we have lambda is equal to 1 with multiplicity 3. And we've already gone over what happens when you have a repeated root. That's it in a previous video. Um, what you get is that that means that Sn is just going to be a constant plus that same solution the reason it's a constant is because it's c1 times 1 to the n. Now we take the same solution, we multiply it by n, and we just do that again. This one's just going to be n squared. And the thing to notice here is we already looked at what is the homogeneous solution on the previous page here. We found that the homogeneous solution is just the constant. So here, this, this which is really the general solution, let me write that here, this is the general solution. Um, we know that this is the homogeneous solution, which must mean that this is the particular solution. So there you have it. This is why your guess needs to be not a, not a linear function, but a quadratic. And of course, you don't have to consider the constant term for that quadratic because the constant is part of the homogeneous solution. Okay, so now we know what the guess for the uh, particular solution is. So from here it's just a matter of doing method of undetermined coefficients. So I'll do that on a new page here. Alright, so I'm, I'm just going to write down the original equation here. It's Sn plus 1 minus Sn is equal to n plus 1. Alright, so we know that the particular solution has the form C2n plus C3n squared. And so now let's iterate it, find what is Sn plus 1 the particular solution. This is just going to be C2 n plus 1 plus C3 n plus 1 squared. So now we just plug it into star here, the original recurrence relation. This minus this is equal to n plus 1. So C2 n plus 1 plus c3 n plus 1 squared minus c2n minus c3 n squared is equal to n plus 1. All right. This is, this is the part that's always tricky for me, especially on the spot here. Okay, luckily I have some notes here to the side, so in case I get stuck. Alright, so I think the easiest way to do this is just to group the terms according to what they are, whether they have a constant n or n squared. So first let's look at the n squared. Looks like we're going to have c3 and a 
minus c3 times n squared. And so obviously this is just 0. That's good, because we don't have an n squared over here. Now how about n's? Well, we're going to have, here we have a c2. Here we're going to have 2c3 once this thing is expanded. And let's see, over here we have a minus c2. It looks like that's it. These are the n terms. Now how about the constants? Here it looks like we're going to have a c2, and here we're going to have a c3. And this is all equal to n plus 1. Okay. So c2 minus c2, those cancel. And so we just have 2 times c3 times n is equal to n. So 2c3 is equal to 1, in other words. So c3 is equal to 1 half. And over here we have c2 plus c3. That's the constant terms. These must be equal to 1. So that means that c2 must also be a half. So c2 and c3 are both a half. So if we plug that back in, we know that the particular solution is just going to be half n plus half n squared. Okay, so the general solution this was an arbitrary constant plus the particular solution which is this. But if you remember we had the initial value problem. So the initial value problem said that s is 0 was also equal to 0. And so it's easy to see if you just plug in 0 for n that you're just left with c1. So that must mean c1 is equal to 0. So the final answer is that the initial value problem, sn, this is the final answer. This is just going to be c1 is 0. So we're just left with half n plus half n squared, also known as n times n plus 1 over 2. So this is probably the hardest way to um, derive this fact, but it's kind of cool as an example, and it shows an interesting recurrence relation. It has a this is a very special recurrence relation because it's non-homogeneous and the input function, which was, let's see, where is that now? Uh, if I can find it. Oh, no, here it is. The uh, input function w overlapped with the general, or with the homogeneous solution. You had a constant here and you have a constant here, so it's kind of an interesting example.